So there are multiple techniques in MRI and also in positive rumination tomography that allow us to uh, image myelin properties and the changing of myelin properties over time in MS patients. There, I've presented different type of contrast, contrast mechanisms and measures that allow us to identify either remyelinated lesions, lesions or changing in myelin within the lesions over time. Um, those are, for example, the studies uh, that uh, apply T1 relaxometry to the identification of remyelinated lesions, both post-mortem and in vivo. We have also applied um, to a similar extent quantitative susceptibility mapping, where we identified for the first time new um, phenotypes of remyelinated lesions. And then there are studies applying different measures to monitor the the changes over time in myelin. So, for example, traditionally the one using magnetization transfer ratio, a measure that is not very specific for myelin, but it's very sensitive. And then there are the studies applying myelin water fraction, a measure which is in theory, and it looks like also in practice, more specific for the pathology occurring in the myelin sheet. Um, and then there are different studies applying diffusion measures, for example, radio diffusivity, um, which can be also applied. Um, peculiar is um, this are the studies which have like PET tracers. There are different families of PET tracers that we can use to image specifically myelin. Um, and I've presented the, the family of the beta amyloid tracers, which are the one that where we had so far most acquired most experience in MS patients. And those tracers tracers have been also applied in the longitudinal setting, showing us the enormous heterogeneity of remyelination in uh, in patients with MS. So there is a paleta of uh, techniques, both in MRI and in PET, which allow us nowadays to image remyelination. Of course, one can do always more, always better. We need to perform more longitudinal studies. We need to understand the reproducibility of these techniques so that we can apply them in larger settings. And the last and very important part, we need to understand the sensitivity to treatment um, of all these changes that we can measure nowadays.